Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 15 QPR2 Beta 1 and I have it on my Pixel 8 Pro to show you each and every new change. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the build number as usual. It's BP11.241025.006 and today we have some good stuff to talk about. The first change you'll notice here is that the not disturb tile is now called modes. That's because now we have the ability to create custom do not disturb modes similar to what we have on iOS. And when you tap on the tile, instead of toggling the feature on or off like before, it will expand, giving you the available options. By default, you have the normal do not disturb mode and the bedtime mode under the same tile. Then when you tap on settings, that's where you will see the new settings page. The first three options are automatically added for you, which are do not disturb, bedtime, and the game dashboard, but you still can create your own mode by tapping on this button. It will give you an overlay card with the driving and the flip to shush options, same as before, but you have custom. Tapping on it will allow you to give your mode a name, and then you have plenty of icons to choose from. I'm gonna choose this one as an example, and then you can tap on done, and that's where it will give you all the customization options. The first thing you can do here is to set a schedule. By tapping on this button, it will give you two options, either to set a day and time or based on your calendar events. When you tap on day and time, it will automatically put 9.30 to 5 p.m. Sunday through Saturday, but you can customize this by tapping on the option and then change the timing. So let's say I sleep every day at 12 30 a.m and wake up at 7 a.m and i want this to be only activated monday through friday i have here an option called alarm can override end time which means if you have an alarm set once it rings it will automatically turn off the schedule so if you want this option activated you can turn on the toggle and then you have the notification settings here you have people where you can choose who can override your sleeping mode for when it comes to calls and messages you can do the same for both and then you have the apps here you can choose none or select certain apps so let's say i want to select facebook to override my sleeping schedule and here i can choose a certain type of notifications i can only choose the comments or tags or i can allow everything to interrupt which is a very handy feature and then we have the alarms and other interruptions here you can activate things like the alarms so if you don't want to miss your alarms you can let the alarms override your sleeping schedule and then you have media sounds touch sounds reminders and calendar events and finally we have the display settings all the toggles at the bottom we already have from the previous version of Do Not Disturb, but what's new here is the display options for filtered notifications. So whatever notifications you choose to overwrite from the first step, you can customize them even further by tapping on this option. Here you have two categories, when the screen is off and when the screen is on. When it's off, you can turn on the toggle that says don't turn on a screen and don't wake for notifications. So if you want minimal distractions, you can activate these toggles. And then when the screen is on, you can hide notification dots on app icons, hide the status bar icons at the top of the screen, don't pop notifications on a screen, and hide from the pull down shade. One more thing worth noting here, if you have the hide status bar icons and don't pop notifications deactivated, once you turn on the hide from pull down shade, it will automatically activate these two options and remove the notifications from all three. Now we are done with all the settings, so let's take a look at the modes tile. Now I have the sleeping mode I just created as one of the options, which I can activate or deactivate by tapping on it. You'll notice here that I can activate multiple modes at the same time. I have do not disturb, bedtime, and sleeping all together activated, and I'm not sure why this is useful, but anyways, you have the option to do so. And once you activate any of them, you will notice here that the status bar got updated with the same icon I chose for the sleeping mode to let you know which one is currently activated. And if you want to access any of the modes directly from the quick settings tile, you can simply tap and hold on it like this and it will take you to the relevant page. The only thing I don't like about this feature 
If later down the road you decided to change your schedule to be based on your calendar events, you won't find any way to achieve this because you are stuck with whatever you chose at first. In this case, you have to create a new custom mode from scratch and then choose calendar events. And the same applies here. I cannot swap it with the normal schedule, but I'm stuck with it. So I hope Google will allow us to change the schedule later in case we need to. Talking about calendar events, here you have the option to choose which calendar and what reply you want to link it to. Last but not least, when it comes to the automatically created modes like Do Not Disturb, Bedtime, and Game Dashboard, they work exactly the same but with slight differences. So for example, under Do Not Disturb, you don't have the option to schedule. You only get this duration for quick settings, which is something we already have. And when it comes to bedtime, here you can adjust your bedtime routine and you have pretty much all the other options exactly the same. When it comes to game dashboard, as you see, it looks different as well. Here you have the app settings, which will take you to the game dashboard settings. And here you have allow all notifications, but you can turn off the switch and you will get the same customization options as we saw in the custom mode. And you have the same display options as well. One more thing to keep in mind, if you want to access the new modes feature under settings, now you have a new menu item on the front page instead of being under the notifications or sound and vibration as before. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the new modes feature. The only thing I wish it had is the ability to link each mode to a specific wallpaper, same as iOS. Before moving to the next chapter, let me remind you about the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. If you like any of the wallpapers I use in my videos, that's where you can find them. I release 12 new wallpapers every week. It provides you with multiple styling options like the blur, brightness, and hue to make your wallpapers stand out. With the ability to edit your home and lock screen wallpapers separately, sync your favorites across all your devices, and more. The Google Play Store download link is in the description. And now let's move on to the next feature. Now let me show you some random tweaks I spotted after installing this build. And the first one is related to the themed icons. With QPR2 Beta 1, now the icons are darker. And for reference, here is how the same icons with the same wallpaper and the color palette looks on QPR1 Beta 3. You notice here, now it's darker. And when I activate the dark mode, you will see the same difference between the two. The second change is under the battery settings. Now you can check up to seven days of usage, not only a couple of days like before. So here I have from Thursday to Wednesday, I can check whatever day I want and I can even drill down in each day like this. So that's it when it comes to the new features. Now let's talk about the bug fixes. The first one is related to the show long app names. Previously on QPR1 Beta 3, I have the feature activated, but when I go to my app list, you will see here that the long app names are not displayed in two lines, but with QPR2 Beta 1, now the feature works as expected. The second fix is related to the color palettes under the wallpaper and the style app. With QPR1 Beta 3, some palettes are duplicated, while on QPR2 Beta 1, it works as expected. But there is only one bug carried over from QPR1 Beta 3 to this build, which is when I tap on the media controls from the quick settings, it doesn't open the relevant app. I tried it with YouTube and YouTube Music, and both do the same. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features in QPR2 Beta 1. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.